be elected for four more. Does that answer your question? I think so. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Elizabeth Brackett. Judge Mikva says he will deliver his recommendation as to whether or not the Emerald Casino license should be revoked within the next two weeks. Cell phones, beepers, traffic jams, with all the day-to-day -day clamor of the city, you might find yourself at times pining for some peace and quiet. Well, there's a new book out that can help. It's Chicago's 50 Best Places to Find Peace and Quiet. With us tonight to share some of her secrets is the author, Karen Horgan Sullivan. Good to meet you, Karen. Thank you. You know, for years, I, uh, at least mentally, have been collecting great hotel lobbies in my mind, great uh, washrooms, uh, great <laughs> parking spaces, uh, back when we needed them, great, uh, the best pay phones. Mm -hmm. uh, is this something that you've been doing uh, all of your life? Well, I've been in Chicago almost 20 years, and over those 20 years, I've been kind of collecting those spots myself. and. Um, when I found out I was going to be able to write this book, I asked everyone in, in Chicago that I know for their tips. And frankly, some people were loath to give them up. Right, because that's the thing. And did you think about that? You're going to print this, and now these places will be a little busier? Yeah, yeah. It did make me a little nervous. I had one friend who recommended the... Um, the Ando gall Gallery, and she was sort of, you could see her physically resist giving up the information. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just hoping that half the city won't show up at, at the same time at these places. Well, let's go through a few of them. Okay. Starting off with uh, Promontory Point on the south side. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of folks take this for granted, don't they, this mm -hmm. site? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually a lot of people I've been surprised um, didn't really know where it was. They thought it was up around Montrose Harbor. Um, they're unaware that it's down around 55th Street. It's, um, it's really an unusual spot in Chicago in that it, it juts out into the lake, so you have the, the vista of, this, of the city and the lake all around you. Um, and it's really a beautiful spot for all seasons. It's, it, there's this large meadow ringed with trees, um, so in the spring it's a great spot to see the, the trees unfurl. Um, fall color is, is really dramatic. And then in the winter, after a snowfall, it's really, really beautiful. Did a lot of the places that you ended up in your book surprise you upon discovery? Yeah, you know, one thing I was really surprised by was the number of areas of natural, natural beauty in the city. I mean, you think of Chicago as so so gritty in so many ways. And there really are a lot of really wonderful nature spots. Um, one of my favorites, I would say, is the North Park Village uh, Nature Center uh -huh. here on the northwest side. Um, I haven't found a single person who knew about it when I told them about it. What's and the name of it? It's the North Park Village Nature Center. It's uh, 5300 Pulaski, North Pulaski. It's, oh, I know um, about this place. Yeah, yeah, acres and acres of, of woodland, wetland, um, hills, woods. Um, you can see deer there. It's really, it's, it's an unusual little spot. Uh, here's another place on the south side that we're going to look at now. This is uh, the uh, museum, the Oriental Institute Museum mm -hmm. on the University of Chicago campus. Mm -hmm. I, I gather th they don't line up uh, here very mm -hmm. often, do they, to get in? No, not so much. It's, uh, it's out of the way. It's, it's in Hyde Park, obviously, uh, away from the museum campus, so it's not so well known by the tourists. It's not the kind of place that's necessarily going to appeal to to children, mm -hmm. which is a good thing when you're looking for peace and quiet. <laughs> I say that as a mom of a five-year-old. I'm not prejudice mm -hmm. against children. Um, and there's, there's such a sense of ancient history residing here. And I have found that, that when people come into the museum, they really respond with a kind of, of reverence for, for the history that resides there. It's, it's a very, um, the colors are very soothing. The history is, is very interesting. Now into the loop. Mm -hmm. And you don't think of the Loop as being a place to find a lot of peace and quiet, but uh, you did find a good one here, uh, the chapel in the sky. Tell us about this. Uh, this is at the Chicago Temple, which is um, a church right, right in the very dark heart of the Loop here. Um, temple in the sky is, uh, you take an elevator up, and there's actually, you can visit it just once a day at 2 o'clock. They take tours up. So if you're unable to go there at that time, the, um, the chapel at ground level is open um, most hours during the day. And that, I find, is a really wonderful spot to duck into when you're in the loop. Even on the grayest day, they have these stained glass windows that glow. I, I, it's almost like they're lit by spotlights. I, I don't think that they are, but um, it's a very relaxing, sort of meditative spot to go in the loop. Yeah, that, and what street is it on? That is on... Um, is that Washington? You know, you're going to trip me up here, Bob. I think it's Clark, Clark and Washington. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Here's the, uh, here's the place on, on your list that uh, is a little pricey. Unlike most of your list, which mm -hmm. is e either free or very inexpensive, the North Pond Restaurant in Lincoln Park. Mm -hmm. You like this, don't you? Yeah, I love North Pond. And I did, I did debate with myself about including it because I really wanted every place to be accessible to, to everyone in the city. But North Pond's location truly is u unique. It's like having a meal in a nature preserve. It's situated on, on the shore of North Pond itself. Uh, you can't actually drive up to the restaurant because it's in the middle of this parcel of land. Um, you walk through this underground tunnel and in the summer the, the doors are open. You can eat outside um, right there in the midst of nature. It's beautiful. You'd think it would be more crowded, but it, it's often not. It's it? often not, which I don't I don't understand. Yeah. Bruce Sherman, the chef there, is wonderful. The food is sublime. It's a, he's a big proponent of locally grown seasonal mm -hmm. foods, so you feel very in harmony with, with nature and the seasons when you go there to eat. It's, it's great. I love it. People are busy uh, all around it, and there are crowds all around it, yeah. but in the middle, you're like in the eye of the hurricane. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very calm. Exactly. And we have uh, a piece of video up from Wilmette here. Now, a lot of people know about the Baha'i Temple, don't they? Yeah, they do, um, but I'm not sure how often people actually make the the trek up there it's a uh, it's an unusual spot it's the building is constructed of this this mixture of concrete and quartz so it's this white you can't really see on the footage but when you get up close it has this sort of sparkle to it that's really compelling it's surrounded by these beautiful beautiful gardens <clears throat> and of course you can go inside the building too and it's um it's very quiet and and peaceful in there yeah, you uh, separate things uh, according to, well, you have indoor places and then you have outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, you tried to focus on the smaller spots? I did. I really, I tried to find places that people didn't generally know about. There are some obvious ones that, that I really couldn't avoid including, places like Morton Arboretum, the Botanic Gardens. Mm -hmm. um, but then I really, I really sought out places that were off the beaten path, places people might, might not know about, might not think to go to. Well, Throughout the city, I, I tried to cover all regions of the city. Yeah, Indian Boundary Prairies, are you talking about the park what, what, that has it's, the zoo in it? Uh, no, no, or that's is this uh, another place. This is another place. This is in South Suburban Markham. Uh -huh. it's, um, it's a parcel of land that was slated for development in the 20s, then the Great Depression hit, and, and this, this land benefited from the Depression um, because it remained undeveloped. It's really the only place in this area where you can see virgin prairie. There are many places where you can see restored prairie, but this is, this is what the pioneers saw. Chicago's 50 best places to find mm -hmm. peace and quiet by Karen Horgan Sullivan. And you know, the wise guys around here who are picking on me, the Sox mm -hmm. fans now, said in the office <laughs> earlier today, if you look in here, there's Wrigley Field in October yeah. is listed. That is yeah. not true, is not, it? That is not true, yeah. not right. true at all. Well, hopefully they'll stay uh, peaceful and quiet, and, and perhaps they will because we're uh, we're doing this uh, on a night when the Sox are playing in, in the World Series yeah, right now. I, yeah. But there is the midnight replay, I guess. Yeah, I can only hope some people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Good luck with the book. Thank you. My pleasure. And next, uh, we'll get the story of a Chicago writer who became a pop culture phenom. Ted Allen was a Chicago journalist who hit the big time as the food and wine connoisseur on the hit cable show, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Take a look. The other day, I had a bunch of uh, Paul Newman cookies, some pistachio nuts, and half a DiGiorno pizza. And that was, I was being considerate of my weight. All right, yeah. I have an idea for a couple things we can set you up with that are, it's not really all about, your, you know, changing your whole diet or anything. Right. But I've got, but I've got some things that are going to give you energy, that are healthy, that are made with natural.